in the first question you have to find out the value that would be printed by the following code you are given a function f and you are given the void main so starting with the void main in the void main there is a variable i whose initial value is 5 and there is a variable j whose initial value is 10. Now the function f is called by passing the address of i. So let's suppose the address of i is 1000. So value 1000 would be passed as a parameter of function f. So now going to function f, there is a pointer p that accepts this address value. So when f would be executed or called, pointer p would contain the address of variable i that means it points to variable i also the value j uh, the second parameter of f is j that means m which is the local variable in the function would now be assigned the value of j and the value of j was 10 so i make m as the value 10 all right so what we are doing in function f is m is equal to m plus 5 so the value of m is changed from 10 to 15 and the data of p is also changed which is equal to the current data of p plus m so p is pointing to i the current data of i is 5 and 5 plus p is equal to sorry 5 plus value at m that is 15 is equal to 20 now since we are assigning this value 20 to the data that is present at the variable i the value the original value of i would change because it is the address of the variable is passed and we are changing the value of the variable itself so i would be changed to indirectly we are doing i plus m now 15 plus 5 is 20 okay and then after doing this computation we return on return we are printing the value i plus j so i has been changed by the function f its value is 20 and the value of j is still unchanged because it was passed by value and not passed by reference so j is still 10 so the printed value would be 20 plus 10 which is equal to 30 so it's not a very difficult question so let's go to the second question now the second question also gives you two codes a function f and another main function and you have to find out what would be printed okay so there is a main function that declares an array a that has five values in it and you have to find what would be printed when f of a comma 5 would be called so this is an array let's write it down here starting from here this is an array a and it has elements 3 5 2 6 and 4 all right this is in dice 0 1 2 3 and 4 this is a so when we call f of a comma 5 this call goes here and in star p that means the address of array a is given to the pointer p so this means that p also starts pointing to the starting location of array a and the value 5 is assigned to n so here the value of n is equal to 5 in this case when we enter the if condition says if n is less than equal to 1 no so we come to else and the else condition says to return max of f p plus 1 comma n minus 1 and p of 0 minus p of 1 now you are given in the note that max of two values returns the maximum of the two values so what we have to do first we'll compute this function in every iteration or every time f is called and then we'll compare the returned value with the value returned by this expression okay so we compute this expression we compute this expression and then we compare the two values to return the maximum of the two so this call the first call would result into a second call of max that would be f of p plus 
minus 1 comma n minus 1. Now n is 5 so n minus 1 would be 4 and p of 0. p of 0 is 3, p of 1 is 5. So 3 minus 5 is minus 2. So when we return we would do this comparison. Currently this call goes here. Okay, so f of p plus 1. Now what does that mean? Currently p is pointing to the starting location of array a. But when I pass to this function f the value p plus 1 in the first parameter, I am actually passing this very array but starting from the first index. Okay, I am not passing 3, 5, 2, 6, 4. Now I am passing 5, 2, 6 and 4. So basically the value of P is incremented by one element and the array that would be passed in the second call would be 5, 2, 6 and 4. And in the corresponding call the indices would be 0, 1, 2, 3. And this is where P is pointing. Okay, now coming in this call we see n is still not less than equal to 1 because here the value of n that is passed is 4. So n is not less than 1. Again another call is made and this call is max of f p plus 1. Again p plus 1 comma n minus 1 that is 3 and p of 0. Now p of 0 is 5 and p of 1 is 2. So 5 minus 2 is 3. Alright. Now this call again makes a, another call to the function f. In this uh, call to function f what would be passed? The array 2, 6 and 4. Alright. The indices would be this. p points here. The value of n is 3. And since again n is not less than equal to 1, another call would be made to the max function with an inner call of p plus 1 comma n minus 1 which is 2 and p of 0. 2 minus 6 is minus 4. Okay, this call is, this call will result in the array 6 comma 4 indices 0, 1, p points here n value is 2. n is again not equal less than or equal to 1. So another call would be made f of p plus 1 comma 1 and this minus this. Now 6 minus 4 is 2. So that is the function call. Now when we make this function call we see that the value of n is equal to 1. So we return 0. So the first value that is returned would be 0. So this expression is returning the value of 0. This expression is 2. So we have to find the max of 0 comma 2. The max of 0 comma 2 is 2 and this 2 value is returned from into the previous call. Now this call this entire call came from this value okay so 2 would be returned here all right so now in the previous call the comparison would be max of 2 comma minus 4 the answer would be 2 again this 2 would be returned back to this call this value comes from here this value is 2 max of 2 comma 3 here we get the value as 3 the maximum is 3 out of 2 and 3 and this 3 value is returned here so the final comparison is max of 3 comma minus 2 and the final result is 3 so 3 is the final answer that would be printed here this is the final answer. So it was a question involving multiple recursive calls and you need to be very careful while you are executing them because a mistake at any one step can prove the whole question to be wrong. Match different values given in list 1 to the values given in list 2 or the options in list 1 to options in list 2. So let's start this question and read out what are the options given in the two lists. 
So the first list says that you are given PQRS as options and the options are static care variable var, m equal to mallet 10 comma m equal to null care start PTR 10 register int var 1 and now you have to match them to the second list the second list actually explains what these commands are doing now in programming you have to be very thorough with the concepts of different keywords what do they do and when we write statements like this what is actually done so when we write a static care var what does it actually do it basically assigns or it creates a variable character variable var whose name is var but it is static in nature static in nature means it preserves its value within the function calls so if it is initialized once and it uh, preserves its value every time a function calls this or uses this variable all right so out of these we have to find a suitable statement that describes this all right describes each of these now coming to the second part or the second statement q option states that m equal to malloc 10 and then m is equal to null now what does malloc do malloc basically assigns you a contiguous amount of memory location the set of memory locations that you have demanded and returns a pointer to the starting of those location and when you assign m equal to null you are basically removing or emptying the address of the memory locations that were assigned to you so these memory locations remain no longer accessible to you all right this is not a correct way of handling or changing the value of a variable a pointer variable to null which has been allocated through malloc because such memory that is allocated must be freed all right the next option r states the command char star ptr 10 now this command is basically declaring a character array of 10 pointers so it is a cat or you can say it is declaring an array of 10 pointer to characters all right each location in the array will be a pointer and it will be pointing to a character value all right now the last option s states that register int var1 now whenever you use the register keyword it is just a request or it is not a command to the compiler but it is just a request to the compiler to allocate a register a predefined register to the given variable because if the register is available this request would be successful and accepted but if not then this request would be denied all right so that is why we say that whenever we use register keyword it is not a command to the compiler all right so now we have to match these four values so let's start reading the second list the first statement or option is sequence of memory locations to store addresses now from the first word itself you get an idea that it is talking about an array an array or a sequence of memory locations that is used to store addresses what is used to store addresses pointers so first statement corresponds to option r that means char star array all right we can write here one now the second option is a variable located in data section of memory now whenever you allocate a static variable it is always allocated or given to you from the data section of the memory so this statement corresponds to the first option in list one so static variable is always a variable that is allocated in the data section all right you need to remember such minute points then only you will be very thorough and clear with the question and the options that are stated in the question now coming to the third statement request to allocate a cpu register to store data this is clearly corresponding to the fourth statement or the fourth option of list one all right and the last one a lost memory which cannot be free the remaining option and as I told you the reason it corresponds to the R option of list one and why it is stated here a lost memory because 
actually when you assign m equal to null you cannot or you can no longer access the given memory that was allocated to you and that is also called a memory leak so now which option corresponds to the correct matching p is given 2 okay q is given 4 r1 so the first option the a option is correct now in these type of questions please don't get confused between by reading all the options first of both the list and then matching them you should always read one list set in your mind that what actually it is stating what command it is telling you and then read the second list that would be a better preferred option so that's all for today an easy question for the day so you can grab easily grab your marks easily in such questions i hope you like the video please mention in the comment section below how did you find it if you understood the question like and share the video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel of easy engineering classes to get more lectures on gate ugc net preparation series and other computer science related subjects. Keep watching, stay tuned, good luck.